What is up guys, back again, and today we're taking a look at the DJI Air 2S. Okay, so as you saw from some of those intro shots, this thing is super capable. The quality is just mind blowing and it's actually a super nice drone to fly around and use. There's some pretty cool features packed in and I thought this needs to be a review. Like I need to do a review of this because it's probably one of the coolest pieces of tech that I've ever owned. And it's definitely not the cheapest. So this thing prices in at 899 pounds or 999 dollars, which is pretty pricey just for the drone itself. Now it gets even pricier because you're gonna to wanna to insure your drone because this is a pretty pricey device. You don't wanna crash it or lose it or break it in any way. And so DJI offer this care insurance plan. So if you pay 150 pounds, it will actually give you insurance for up to two years. That basically means if you crash the drone or lose the drone, whatever it may be, if it's damaged, DJI will go ahead and give you a new drone, which is pretty good. Now this refresh is actually much appreciated. It wasn't too long ago we had the Air 2 coming out, and now DJI's already thrown as the Air 2S. So there's actually quite a big upgrade in terms of you get a larger sensor, which is one inch, so twice the size of the half inch sensor on the Air 2. So this is actually much more comparable to something like the 2 Pro rather than the Air 2, and it's obviously a lot cheaper as well. But you're getting pretty much the highest resolution DJI's ever given, 5.4K at 30 FPS, which is pretty impressive. You're also getting 4K at 60 FPS. And yes, the 2 Pro has this, but you're actually getting a higher bit rate on the Air 2S. So you're getting 150 megabits a second versus 100 on the 2 Pro. So surely there must be something that's better about the 2 Pro, right? Let's get to that. So when you're actually recording 4K 60 on the 2 Pro, you're actually making full use of that sensor. You're getting the full focal length. But when we jump over to the Air 2S, you actually are getting it significantly cropped in. So that is one of the downgrades. But if you're not too fussed about the crop, the quality does still look good. And overall, I would say they look pretty identical other than the fact that you're getting that crop. So it's kind of a bummer, but honestly, I never really film in 60 anyway. I tend to film in 24 for that cinematic look. So I'm making full use of the sensor. But if you're not shooting in 4K 60, you do get a really nice wide shot in terms of your pictures and video. You're getting 22 millimeters, which isn't warped or fisheyed, but it is wide enough to just get a nice cinematic shot, especially if you're adding crop as well in post, then it's just really nice to have. Now, something I absolutely love about this drone is it records in 10-bit colors. So you're getting super nice range of colors, you're getting more accurate colors, and overall, when you go ahead and record in D-Log or a flat color profile, you're gonna make life so much easier when you go ahead and color grade, and your footage is gonna look so much better. So 10-bit really does make a difference. The only real downside is you can't digitally zoom when using a flat color profile. You can only zoom when using the standard. So yeah, I don't really understand why DJI did this, but considering you're gonna be editing and color grading, I guess you can just edit in post and add your digital zoom in there. Now, in terms of taking pictures, compared to the last model, you're only getting a 20 megapixel sensor. So even though it's a larger one inch sensor, you're actually getting a lower megapixel count. And previously you had 48. So really I wouldn't pay attention to these numbers because megapixels aren't everything. And the lower the megapixel count, the larger each pixel is. And so more lights getting in, you're gonna get better low light pictures. And I can say the pictures are definitely better than any other DJI drone, even the two pro. This has insane dynamic range, so crispy you're getting 14 stops of dynamic range compared to 12.4 on the Pro. So really, this is the best drone you can get if you wanna do aerial photography from DJI. And if you're interested in some of the pictures I've taken from this drone and also from other cameras and phones, you can go ahead and check out my photography page. It's mattrob.photo. 
Now, one area the 2 Pro really does outperform the Air 2S that's just so much better in my opinion, is you have control over the aperture. So say you wanna get some motion blur in your video, you wanna lock your shutter speed, double your frame rate, there's no control over your exposure or anything like that because you have a fixed aperture on the Air 2S. So you pretty much are stuck with simply using ISO, which doesn't really do much in daylight, or an ND filter. And ND filters are annoying because you have to take them off and put them on and carry them around with you, and they're expensive. It's basically like a pair of sunglasses for your drone, whereas on the 2 Pro, you can change the aperture, keep the shutter speed, double the frame rate, and you're good to go. Now, in terms of modes, Air 2S really does have it compared to the past DJI drones. It's got the latest of all the tracking features. You've got Active Track 4.0. You can track your subjects, your cars, animals, whatever it may be. And there are some pretty nifty features. The drone can actually follow you parallel. It can follow you from behind. It can do this thing where it circles the thing that is tracking. So and the tracking is really excellent on this. And I've actually been driving and the drone has approached a tree and it's actually detected the tree using those new sensors on top and it's actually avoided it. So super impressive. I was definitely very scared considering this is pretty expensive and it was a big tree, so there's no way I was gonna get it back. But DJI really have stepped it up. There's also really nice new smart features. So it can actually automatically capture these really cool shots. It can capture all these different sequences and it only does work at 4K when you're tracking. So you can't actually make use of that full 5.4K. And when you're using the smart shots, you can't use D-Log, you can't use the full resolution. So again, you have to step it down to 4K, which still does look pretty good. And if you're new into flying drones and capturing aerial video photography, this is really great because the drone pretty much does the work for you and flies itself to capture some nice montages and cool shots. So definitely nice DJI pack this in. There is a cool mode called spiral, which basically flies around in a spiral shape and captures the object in the middle. You also have rocket mode, which basically means the drone just flies up really fast and captures everything in front of it in one direction, flying upwards. So you can get this really cool shot, like a rocket is going up and Overall, there's just a lot of features. I haven't even tried all the smart modes myself. I tend to just use it in manual mode. I tend to just do everything myself, but you do have those smart features if you want them. You also have hyperlapse mode. Now this is only available in 4K, but you can basically take a time-lapse. You can lock the direction and put in how long you want it to be, and it will capture a really nice hyperlapse. Now just take a look at some of these shots that I took of my friend's car and my car really impressive and we were driving up to about 30 miles an hour. Once you start going past that, you do start to lose the drone a bit, but it's still impressive that it can actually keep up. And if you wanna fly this drone really, really fast, there is a sport mode, which basically disables all the sensors and allows you to get the best speed, best performance. There's also a normal mode, which is just standard to fly. And you have a cinema mode, which is a little bit smoother and overall gives you those nice cinematic shots. Now, one of the best things is the auto return to home. The amount of times that say the signal has gone a bit low or maybe it's gone behind like a hill and it starts to get a bit low or I'm a little bit confused where I am and it will automatically come back super, super handy. Especially if you just get a little bit disorientated. Sometimes you're actually looking up at the drone, looking down and you're kind of flying differently depending on which way the drone's facing. So it's nice to be able to just return it to home if you get confused in any way and it's super friendly for beginners just so you have that little bit of confidence that you will actually get the drone back. Now, in terms of the build quality, it's a magnesium alloy frame covered in pretty premium plastic. Is there a such thing as premium plastic? It feels pretty premium, this drone, nonetheless. It feels good in the hand. It's pretty hefty. It is over the 250 grams, so you will have to apply for a license if you're in the UK, but I would honestly check your local region and the drone flying laws. But here, you can actually fly up to 150 meters you do need to apply online for a license considering this is a larger drone and you need to do some tests and you pay like a nine pound a year fee, which isn't too bad. So honestly, I would recommend doing it. It's definitely not too strict in the UK, as long as you don't fly over sort of air bases or any sort of airport or anything like that. As long as you keep out of the way of planes, should be okay. Now I've actually crashed this drone a couple times. It hasn't actually dropped out of the sky, but it's definitely hit into things and the blades are pretty durable. One thing I like is you don't need a tool to remove them, so you can actually just push down, rotate, and then they just pop off and you can just replace them super easy. And I love the way the drone folds up and the blades fold in. It just makes it so nice and compact to bring round. And I know this isn't the smallest drone that DJI make, but considering the one inch sensor, this thing is really tiny. You can actually put it in your bag super easily. 
And one of my favorite things to pair with it is the controller. The controller really does feel part of the drone. It's the same kind of material, the same look, and overall the controls fit really nicely and make it really easy to fly this drone. So you just pull up the antenna part, which acts as a phone holder, snap in your phone, there's a built-in cable, which is USB-C, or Lightning, you can interchange them, and then plug it in your device, open up DJI Fly app, and you're pretty much good to go. You can start flying. The app is incredible. It shows you where other aircraft are in the sky. It allows you to set limits, so you can actually lock the height you go to or the distance. One of the things I do recommend is you turn on this option to charge your phone from the controller. That way your phone's not gonna die and you're not gonna have problems trying to get your drone back. So definitely do recommend that. I also really like how the joysticks unscrew and pop underneath because then it's completely flush. You can slide it in a backpack and it isn't hard to sort of carry with you. So I really like that. Something else I really like is it's USB-C, so it's future-proof. And if you already have USB-C cables, you can make use of those to charge up the controller. Now the drone actually also has USB-C port, but you can't actually charge up the drone from this port. You need to use the official charger, but you can actually use this to take some footage off the drone. There is seven gigabytes or so of built-in storage. Now, one thing which was really nice when flying of a night is there's this auxiliary light underneath. So if you're struggling to land and you can't really see the environment around you, it will turn on this auxiliary light. And it's kind of like this big UFO kind of beam of light. And at first it kind of spooked me out, but it's really handy. It can allow you to just see a little bit better to land your drone. Now, in order to turn your drone on, you will need to actually click the button, let go, click it again and hold it down until you hear the beeping sound. And that's the same for the drone and the controller. You will have to do that. I was a little bit confused at first. I was holding it down, pressing it, could not figure out how to turn this on and I had to Google it. So click, let go, click again and hold it down. That's how you turn your drone on, you're welcome. Now, in terms of range, DJI state you get 12 kilometers. I've only ever flown about three away and the signal did get quite low. So honestly, there's always something in the way, whether it's a hill, building, trees, whatever it may be, they drastically reduce the signal. So unless you have like this big open space or you're on top of some sort of hill, you're really not gonna get 12 kilometers. You're probably gonna get like four or five if you're lucky. Depends on where you live. If you live in a big open space, then you may get more. But here in the UK, you're only gonna get about sort of three or four. So to conclude, Yes, it's annoying you need ND filters, you can't change the aperture, but price is good compared to the 2 Pro. You're getting high resolution, really nice pictures, if not the best out of any DJI drone. You're getting nice handling, good build quality, awesome AI features, and overall just a wicked device that is probably the coolest thing that I own. So yeah. If that doesn't sell it to you, I don't know what will. So if you're gonna pick one of these drones up, definitely do make sure to use my links down below. It just helps me out a little bit. And also, if you could hit subscribe, click the bell icon, it would be so much appreciated. We're almost at 50K, and I really enjoyed doing the video on this drone because it's honestly just the coolest thing I own. So yeah, see you guys later. Peace.